A Virginia pastor has been arrested on 19 felony charges. It is absolutely insane. And when we get into this here, because the background of this pastor, the type of work that he sought after, it all leads to the reasoning for the arrest. I would even call this diabolical. We're going to get into it because that's what we do. We expose church corruption and the wolves that occupy their pulpits. And by everything that I'm about to bring you here, David Schneider is a wolf. Before we get into all of it, I want to welcome you guys to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story how did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all, which you will find a link to in the description section of all my videos. And also, if you guys are able to, as I have shared on previous videos, myself along with my wife are going through a very difficult time right now. My wife recently suffered a stroke, only 39 years old. In addition to that, she had developed a vegetation on her main heart valve uh, where we were in the hospital for a week. Uh, she is now receiving at-home health care for the next six weeks to, with antibiotics to remove that vegetation. There's a lot we don't know right now um, about the exact condition. They also think that she may have a clotting disorder as well, so she's on blood thinners for that. Um, right now, I am in the process of both taking care of her uh, and running here the channel and I got to tell you guys it is uh, definitely getting to me um, It's taken everything all of your, your your prayers your kind words your donations to keep me going um, There's a lot of fear that I'm dealing with right now. So I Would ask that you uh, continue to keep me and my wife in your prayers uh, And as you guys know with these things, you know medical bills they stack up. We got a lot of follow-up appointments my wife is going to be out of work for the next six weeks, uh, not getting a paycheck. She's not eligible yet for any sort of short-term disability or anything like that. So it is all on me right now. We are facing a lot. So if you were able to help contribute, you know, if you've been blessed by my ministry at all, if you've watched me for any length of time, you appreciate the work I do here. And, you know, you can help us out right now in our time of need. We can definitely use you. There's a couple of different ways you could do that. One, by hitting the super thanks button on the YT video, or you can become a monthly contributor by joining my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month at patreon.com slash notbysightnews. That link is in the description. And I have to say a huge thank you to all of you who have contributed, who have donated. We are blown away, that being my wife and I, by your generosity to help us out, the nice comments that you've written. She's read many of them too, by the way, and she really feels it and appreciates it as well. Please keep that coming. We could definitely use your support in this very uh, difficult time. So thank you again. Okay, let's get into it. This Virginia pastor, David Schneider, wow, you wanna talk about a wolf, we'll, we'll get into it. But he was arrested earlier in August on 19 felony counts involving inappropriate behavior with little ones. Now, Schneider was the lead pastor of Fairport Baptist Church in Reedville, Virginia. He had been the senior pastor there since around October of 2022. In fact, there had been a, what they call it, you know, his sort of, you know, inaugural uh, service in, in January of 2023, where they were just basically, it was, you know, his, I don't know what you want to call it, like his, uh, his, his, in, you know, his induction ceremony or, you know, whatever it was to kind of christen him the new pastor of Fairport. They had that service back in January of 2023. Interestingly enough, since the arrest, that sermon had been taken down from Fairport Baptist Church's website. However, uh, thanks to, you know, of course, you try to delete these things. They never fully go away. Uh, the Roy's report was able to obtain a copy of it. And interestingly enough, there were some things that were said during that sermon about Schneider that really show you, well, the type of wolf that, you know, was there all along. Now, 
during that sermon, clips of it, they talked about how David Schneider was one of the most influential youth pastors in the state of Virginia. They said that his teachings as a youth pastor, you know, uh, impacted, you know, a, a whole generation of youth that were coming up wanting to serve Christ. And they also mentioned Schneider's time spent as a youth pastor at Nomino Baptist Church, also in Virginia. Uh, and as I continue to go through this report, you know, you look at this guy's background. He graduated from Liberty University, but, you know, he got degrees in, in, in youth ministry. He wanted to work with little ones. He also has experience in special education and also worked for the YMCA. So what's the common theme here among all of this? Schneider's work with little ones. Now, eventually he got himself up to a senior pastor, but was this all a plan from the get-go? Get close to little ones so that he could act inappropriately with them. And again, I remind you, 19 felony counts against the pastor. And, and obviously for the platform that we're on here, I can't repeat all of the exact charges. Now, if you wanna read the full scope, I encourage you guys to go over to the Roy's report and you can you know, get the full on everything over there. But let me tell you, it's bad. It is very bad. And again, you know, his history, and, and I think, God forbid, he worked in special education. And, and I don't know uh, if any of these little ones that were impacted here by Schneider, if any of them were victims that had special needs, because this would make him even more of a monster if that was to be the case. Now, since the arrest, uh, there had been other recordings of sermons that even, even actually go to July because Schneider kind of disappeared from the pulpit even weeks prior to his arrest. And you can hear audio recordings of the sermon, other leaders of the church talking about how Schneider had a little bump in the road, but they were hoping to get him back by around July 15th or so. Uh, to the knowledge that I have and what I have seen, Schneider has not returned to the pulpit because he's being he's being held without bond. So he wouldn't have been back. Now, we haven't seen any sort of a, a statement from Fairmont uh, Baptist about, you know, him being fired. Nothing like that at all. They have not. In fact, you know, multiple calls have been reached uh, out to the church for comment about this, and they haven't said anything. And I'm not surprised because oftentimes churches try to, you know, work damage control in these situations uh, to try to, you know, you know, mitigate any sort of, you know, any more loss from the congregation and all of that. But more audio recordings from the church, even as most recent as August 11th now, uh, where you can hear a member of the congregation thanking church leaders uh, for their, you know, their guidance during this difficult season and hopes that they can find a new minister for them going forward. So that might be an indication that they are looking for somebody to replace Schneider. However, there was still no mention made during the August 11th service of Schneider's arrest. So obviously transparency is something that's not being, you know, taken very seriously here at the church. And the members deserve to have that transparency. Because again, this was somebody who was paraded around as some sort of a hero for little ones with his youth ministry, the work at the YMCA, his work in special education. All of it was one big lie. This guy was a monster all along that took advantage of his position. Look, it's a privilege to work with little ones and youth. But what this guy did was completely, completely take advantage of that and he sought out to you know just take so much from these little ones and let's not forget what the bible says about anybody who would try and cause harm to a little one it would be better to have a millstone tied around your neck and have you drown in the sea god takes this stuff very seriously you know i had a conversation with someone the other day about you know church corruption and it was as if they just wanted to put their head in the sand and pretend this sort of thing doesn't happen because it's a church or because it's a pastor. But the problem is, is that people look too much at the title of an individual 
rather than the actual fruit. I say it all the time. The Bible says you will know people by their fruits, not by their titles. That's the problem. We trust the title more than we actually go to look at the fruit. Because you think that just naturally, because somebody calls himself a pastor, that they can be trusted. That's just not the case anymore. You think that because you go to a church, you can trust everything that comes out of that church because it's a church. And you think that a church is a safe place for people to be, to be able to trust leaders, right? To gather and worship with one another. But there has now been so much corruption within these churches that it is no longer a safe place for people to be. You know, one thing I always encourage people to do is get yourself involved uh, in a home church. A, a church is not a building. Many people think that if you can just get somebody to a building, it's going to make some sort of a, you know, supernatural turnaround in their life. And that that is that is so wrong. That is so false. You can have church with, you know, with, with your family, with, with close friends you trust and you know, you know, in a home environment. And not that those are perfect, by the way. I'm not saying that those are. But there's a lot less risk of running into people like a David Schneider in those types of situations. Uh, just look at the book of Acts. Uh, you, know, you know, where home churches were, were very present during the book of Acts. You could read about it there. And I do think that in this time that we're in right now, that this, this may in fact be the model that believers need to get back to. Because if it's not the money grubbers out there, the big televangelists that are, you know, deceiving people with the prosperity gospel, you know, it's people like Schneider who, you know, are serial preds that go after little ones. So there's just, there's, there's corruption on many levels. It's not just as it comes to inappropriate behavior, but also the false prosperity gospel uh, and all of the other manipulation that's going on with televangelists and so on. So we'll continue to call this out. And I would love to hear from you, especially if you are somebody who either attended the church uh, in the past at Fairmont, or maybe you, you know, someone who knew Schneider and you'd like to just offer up your thoughts on this situation. The comment section will be open for you to do so. Don't forget as well, if you are able to uh, help contribute to my ministry uh, and helping me and my wife right now in our difficult time. Uh, I encourage you guys to uh, help us out by hitting the super thanks button on the YT video, or you can uh, become a monthly contributor by joining the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month at patreon.com slash notbysightnews. That link is in the description. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing in the church, exposing the corruption of the wolves that occupy its pulpits, we always want to give people that opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That is the one that we need to put our eyes on. So if that's you, you're watching right now, you're somebody that has not yet received Jesus into your life, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but... I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do, repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then, you know, just jump back in your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, all of your, your donations, helping out me and my wife, your kind words, they mean the world to us right now. So thank you again. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.